Hello everyone, this is Reza. Welcome to another video of intermediate rigging series in Maya. In this video, we are going to talk about twist shoulder controls and how to create them. So if you look at this video here, you can see when the arm goes out, the shoulder moves ever so slightly. The deltoid keeps the muscles almost intact and then the forearm rotates and the elbow bone follows the arm bone completely. And that's the type of effect we would like to create because by default the shoulder bone 100% follows the rotation of our FK controls and that's physically incorrect and I would say impossible. So we would like to create that effect in Maya. Now back to the application. First things first, I'm just going to make sure that my FK control is enabled. I probably go ahead and turn off the visibility of my character. Now in order to achieve that effect, I need some supporting bones that's been placed carefully in the shoulder structure. And I need to attach that extra shoulder chain into my original shoulder bone and from there I can control the movements and since the original shoulder bone is controlled by FK then we can easily get that effect once we have that extra shoulder chain in place. So let's see how we can achieve that. I'm going to zoom in need to make sure that I'm in rigging menu set and I'm just going to hold down X and create a bone at the center of my scene. Going to press enter. Of course, first things first, I need to make sure that this bone that we just created is aligned with the shoulder bone that I have here. So I'm going to select the shoulder bone as driver, shift select the driven via the 3D scene and I go to constrain, parent constraint, and make sure there is no offset so the bone can snap to this bone. And we go add. I'm going to zoom in and make sure that this end bone is also snapped to the elbow joint. So I'm going to hold down a V middle mouse button and snap it that way. Now, um, it's really hard to distinguish which one is which. Of course, we have the outliner to select these two bones for us, but we need to change the radius, and I preferably would like to change the color of the bones. Same methods we used for foot rolls, uh, so it's really easy to distinguish. I don't need that parent constraint anymore, so I can click on it and press delete. Now, as for these two bones, I'm going to set the radius to something like 0.9 so they're much bigger than the original shoulder chain. I also press Control A to go to the outliner with these two bones selected. I go to enable overrides and pick a red color for them. Well, they're on the left hand side of the character, so we always choose a red color. I'm going to do the same thing for the original one. So it's really easy to distinguish. Well, right off the bat, we need to make sure that freeze transform is done. So go to modify and freeze transformation. So there is no rotation values. And I go to the end bone and make sure that the X is down the chain because right now that's not the case. So we have different ways of doing this and I explained that in our previous videos, but for now I'm going to go to Orient and make sure Orient Joint to World is selected. So X is now successfully goes down the chain. Again, make sure it's snapped to the center of uh, the elbow that we have. Now these two bones are going to control how much rotation we're going to get when we orient the FK controls. But having these two bones probably wouldn't do the trick. It's not enough. We need more bones to have that gradual rotation. So probably 10% this bone and then 20% or 25% the other bone, 50% the third bone, and maybe 75 to 90% the 
one close to the elbow joint. So I'm going to select the end one and duplicate that twice, control D twice. And I'm gonna select joint three, move it up, try to have equal spacing. No need to be super accurate, but we still need to make sure that the spacing between them is almost equal. Now time to rename them. So the main joint is going to be JNTL shoulder twist A01. And again, of course, as usual, I'm going to select, copy the name. This one is going to be JNT E and L shoulder twist is going to be D01. Obviously this is A and then B, C and D. So I'm gonna continue. Feel free to readjust the position of them if you think it's much easier to read that way. But again, it really doesn't matter as long as you name them and know how to control them. So now the mission is to make sure that this bone on the top doesn't rotate as much and the one at the bottom, twist D01, fully rotates with elbow. Sounds familiar? Of course it does. We can definitely do that with a simple IK handle. That's how we use um, IK chain for our limbs, arms and legs. So let's go ahead and select the skeleton menu and go to create IK handle. And since we're dealing with twist and rotation, it's better to use a single chain solver. So with the single chain solver selected, I'm gonna select the A01 and control select D01. So first joint and last joint and create our IK handle. I'm going to call this CS for single chain IK L shoulder twist 01. And again, this is a, just a naming convention I try to use through the, throughout the entire series, but feel free to use a different name. Of course, I'm gonna use the same name and rename the effector of it. So we know what we're dealing with, effector 01. Now let's fix the hierarchy before it's too late. I'm gonna select the IK and control select the shoulder A01, shift select the clavicle and press the P key. So they're all inside the clavicle. We don't want anything to just hang around in the root of our out outliner. I'm gonna press F to very quickly find them in case if I need to select them manually. Hold down shift, click to expand everything. So I have access to single chain, IK and the newly created twist bone. Now, right now, if I select the FK control and try to rotate it, you can see there is no connection. The whole chain that we have and the IK handle just stays behind. And that's not good. We want this chain to follow the rotation of the FK chain. I'm going to undo. There's a really quick fix for that. I'm gonna select the elbow and then control select the or shift select the IK from the viewport. So we select the driver, the bone and control select the driven, which is the single chain IK. And I'm gonna go to constraint, point constraint. I'm just gonna reset the setting and go add. Now, if I select the control and rotate, you can see everything follows nicely. Next is to fix the orientation of uh, this little guy. So if I enable row call rotation axis, I might be able to zoom in so you guys can see the axis. Yeah, that would be a good angle. So if I select the control and rotate in X axis, you can see this bone is not rotating. However, if I pick another axis, such as Z, you can see this rotates. I can even showcase that in the first bone. You can see the X, if I go and select the FK control, the local rotation axis doesn't rotate at all. But if I go to Z, 
it rotates. I go to Y, it rotates. The only axis that it doesn't rotate is X. So you can see nothing moves. That can be a problem and there's a really easy fix for that. All you need to do is to select the main shoulder bone and then shift select the twist D01. So the, the very last joint of the newly created chain and you go to constrain, orient constrain, make sure there's no maintain offset and then apply. Now look, if I go and with this, just gonna turn off local rotation axis on this guy and just focus on this end joint. If I go and rotate it again in that X, you can see now it's rotating. That's great. We're certainly making progress. I'm gonna select the joint and turn off its local rotation axis. Now we managed to fix the orientation for the A and D. It's time to include B and C twist bone as well. Now I'm gonna select the D, shift select A, and then I either click on B or C, and then repeat the same process on the other bone. So I'm gonna go with B for now. Now we need to apply two constraints on these two. So I'm gonna go to constrain, point constraint, reset, apply. It slides a little, but that's fine. I'm going to orient, orient constrain and add. Now if I have access to these two, we can see that now we have A and D selected. So because this should follow the rotation of the A joint, we are going to, in point with the point constraint selected, we are gonna select shoulder twist A and it, in its weights, we are going to put two. And you can see it snaps back to its original position. I'm gonna do the same thing for rotation, make sure twist A is selected and I put two. Now if I enable local rotation axis and rotate the FK control, you can see it rotates this bone, but not as much. And that's exactly what we want. Remember, we want gradual rotation from top to bottom. So the top joints not rotating as much, but the bottom ones almost following along with the rotation of the forearm. So, um, that's great. That means that it's working beautifully. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other bone. So I'm gonna select D, shift select A. We've already looked after B, now let's click on C. I'm gonna do the same thing. Point and orient. Now let's go to the outliner under JNTL shoulder twist C, we have access to these two. Let's select the point constraint. Now, because this bone is going to follow D, then in our point constraint, we need to have uh, the value in twist D. So I'm gonna press two, and you can see the bone snaps back to its position. Go to orient, Twist D, set to two. Now if I enable its local rotation axis and rotate the FK chain, you can see it's almost rotating with the speed of like a normal speed. Now let's put that to a test because up to now I was just uh, playing with local rotation axis. That may not be visually clear exactly how the gradual twist takes place. So let's go ahead and actually attach a few cubes to these guys. Um, I'm going to go to create polygon primitive, create a cube. This cube is right over here. So let's scale it a little. And I'm going to duplicate it three times. 
So control D, control D, control D, because we have four bones, four cubes per bone. Going to select the cube, find our twist A, parent, cube, find our twist B, parent, cube C, find our twist C, parent, and cube D, parent. Apparently I made one extra. We've got the cube, C we've got the cube, and D we've got the cube, so we don't need that one. Now I'm gonna select those cubes, and in order to snap them back to these points, I need to zero out, translate, and orient. And I'm going to make them visually clear. So translate them a little. That's good. Now, moment of truth, the power of advanced twist control is this, where you can see the shoulder bone doesn't move much. This bone moves ever so slightly. This bone moves more and this bone follows the forearm completely. And that gives the character that realistic twist control especially if it's a humanoid character you kind of need that realism in movement and this setup definitely provides that I'm going to select all the cubes you can hide them but i'm going to press delete on them and that's how you set up advanced twist control for shoulder bone now you can go ahead and do the same thing for the other side even better you can do the same thing for the forearm or elbow joint. It's the exact same process that you go through. So take that as a challenge. See if we can repeat the same thing for the elbow. I'm certainly going to go ahead with that and provide that for the elbow and then repeat the process for the other side. Just notice that this one is still visible. So I'm just going to turn off the visibility for this little guy. What was the clavicle? And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and let me know how you did. If you successfully managed to finish this, then let me know in the comments below. And again, that encourages me to produce more and more videos and help out the community. Um, see you in the next video, I guess.